Booyah! All right, welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure you click that subscribe button below. Give me a like, hit the bell, all that stuff. Uh, today on To the Fullest, we have my good friend, Josh Conway. How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. How you doing? Thanks uh, for having me back. Yeah, man. It's great to have you back. Yeah. You're looking really good, man. You. You, you. You've lost some weight. You got a, a little bit. fantastic new haircut. I love <laughs> it, man. All courtesy of a really cute girl with pink hair on. So, yeah. And that's what I'm hearing, man. Yeah. You got a new uh, new interest in your life? Yeah, it's fun. She's cool. I like her a lot. We're getting married uh, sometime in the future, but oh. engaged for right now. So That's, that's fantastic, yeah. man. Yeah. We uh, we met actually through Tinder. Oh, really? And uh, I, it's weird because I, uh, I, I had a client in Nikon, uh, the camera company, years back, and one of their photographers that I worked with, uh, I got to know her pretty well, and her fiancé, now husband, was coming around a lot, and I got to know them both really well. And I was like, how'd you guys meet? And they're like, well, actually, Tinder. And I was like, wasn't well, that a hookup <laughs> kind of situation? And uh, like, yeah, but, you know, it worked out for us. And so I, I you know, I think the last time I was ta talking to you, I was in that, you know, divorce process and all that sort of stuff and, and uh, bounced around different places. And, and so I um, I was dating, and, and I met this girl, and... From the first moment I met her, actually before I met her, the reason why I wanted to go on the first date was because she talked about, <clears throat> you know, this is beginning of COVID times, and she she worked in the similar industry as us. She was a um, party planner. You know, she was the people who hired us, who hired our companies. They were the ones who got the original client. And uh, so she worked with companies like that. And actually, it's funny, like her son worked on a gig I'd produced for AT&T at the Palms uh, for a CES thing years back, and I just like didn't, you know, it's kind of weird. Uh, oh, cool. So his son's in the industry as well. Well, he he had, he was working at the time, yeah, helping. He she helped get him in, and he was doing a lot of like, uh, don't know exactly the title of his job, but he helped make the shows happen. He uh, he was a hard worker and did a lot of things to help out. But um, but yeah, he was actually managing the dressing room for the the artist that was performing uh, for the pre and post show uh, pictures and so on. And so he, he was sharing a story with me one day. I was like, that's a show that I produce. He goes, yeah, I told you I was working on that show. I'm like, oh, sorry, I don't listen sometimes. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Um, but, yeah, man, so I, I met – I so I'm talking on the phone with her one day. And uh, I'm like, so what have you been up to? And she's like, oh, well, uh, me and my friend, you know, can't really go out. There's nowhere to go to. And we're trying to get some exercise. We're trying to figure out what we do. And so we do these things called a mile shot walk. And I was like, mile shot walk? That sounds kind of cool. What is that? And uh, – she goes, well, we, we have we walk around this you know tr trail. It's around Lone Mountain, and uh, it's about two and a half miles. And you have your favorite tumbler of whatever chilled drink that you want to walk with, uh, wine or vodka drink or water if you choose. And then every mile you take a shot. <laughs> and and like I, exactly, I laughed. I'm sitting there going, you sound fun. <laughs> so let's we should hang out. Yeah. And then we did the mile shot walk. That was our first date. And then. Uh, Second date, I wanted to uh, do, you know, I asked her out and I wanted to take her to the drive-in movie theater that's here in town because I hadn't done that ever, you know. I was like, this would be a cool experience as a date. I've never done it. And uh, get in the back of the truck, you know, maybe make out while you're watching a movie. That's kind of cool. And, uh, and then the drive-in movie theater shuts down because of COVID. Ugh. So I booked a date to be on a Sunday night, and this was now Friday that it shuts down. I'm like, shit, what do I do? Well, I got to stand out. You know, I mean, you're in a dating scene. You're, you're competing <laughs> against other people, you know, for the same girl kind of. And uh, so how do you stand out? And that's kind of how I, I look at life in general. It's like, how do you find a way of standing out? And um, so driving movie theaters bunked. And last time I was here, I talked with you about a recording project I did where it was sound design, where I did this big, huge surround sound system. I went out and recorded some nature and things like that. So I already knew of this spot out in the middle of the desert, and it's a dry camp area, so there's no, no like, facilities or anything like that. But it's a you know area where I can go set up the truck. And so I had a 10 by 10 tent. I went to store, got myself a screen that could stretch between the 10 by 10 tent. I already had a projector. I had some speakers, and I set up a drive-in movie theater at the back of my truck in the middle of the desert. Aww. All battery powered. Brought grill out there had some food, had a wine that was actually made from the Josh Vineyard. So I was like, come on, I'm Josh, here's Josh Vineyard. <laughs> and uh, it worked out pretty well. And uh, she still talks about that date as being one of the coolest dates she's ever been on in her entire life. So That's a fantastic concept for a date, man. I love that. Yeah. Tying a little bit of what we used to do and 
dating. So nice. Yeah. Yeah, my uh, my brother has a uh, little portable projector screen and a and a gas powered generator, and so when we go camping, we'll set up a spot near the near the tents and stretch a long extension cord out so he can't hear the generator. Yeah, and we'll we'll do movie night, and like the last time we did that, uh, it was fantastic. We were staying uh, up in Kolob, and you can camp right on the right on the water of the lake. So it's like I was literally fishing and watching a movie in the middle of the night. Just chilling up on the top of the it's mountain. So cool. It's so cool. I mean, like that's like, those are those moments you sit there and go. It doesn't matter how much money you got. It's like if you can make because what we just talked about. It's like we have you know connections we can pull on, or we buy a secondhand piece of this and that. And I mean that drive-in movie dinner date like probably cost me as much as like the drive-in dinner movie date would have cost me. Yeah. You know, I mean, like if we had gone to a restaurant and bought you know drinks and whatever, and and then gone to the movie and bought concessions, I was like, well, shit, I spent about the same amount of money. Totally different outcome, though. Oh I mean, yeah. It, if I if it was the drive-in movie theater, it would have been like, okay, that was kind of cool. But this was like a lifelong story I shall never forget. You know, so yeah, that's a really personal experience, and it was just that for the two of you out there, you know, it wasn't like anybody could just show up to see this movie. Yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. That's awesome. So yeah, you know. well, I was glad to you know, Tinder's working for people, man. Yeah, that's you know, fantastic take... finding an actual partner instead of just a hookup on Tinder. It's a great story. Yeah. Maybe this would be a, uh, this would be a, we should send this clip to Tinder. They can use it for commercials. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's a, so that's part of it. You know, thanks for the compliment on like my looks and stuff like that. I, uh, you do look really good, man. You're kicking butt. That's, thank you. Thank you. You're, you're, you're a good, I mean, you've always been healthy and in good shape, but thank I've, you. I've, I've been a big dude. I've been over, I've been 200 pounds since I was 18 and got to be a lot bigger than that. I was at 350 pounds when I was in my college, early 20s and years and, a lot of it had to do with depression and whatever and eating to cover that and, you know, st stuff. And a lot of people go through similar things. And But I got to a point where I was like, okay, what's the point of this? What's the point of life? Blah, blah, blah. As I'm getting through my 20s and career was going well, but still had those struggles with those things. And and then, you know, I went through a few journeys of well, when I got to be about 30, I like dealt with my shit and and talked about things and worked through things and, and then started working out and getting healthier and losing weight, noticing that mine was changing a lot. And uh, and then started getting into yoga, meditation. That helped for a long time. That's probably one of the biggest things that helped me. Oh yeah. And then recently, so being involved with Erica, who's my fiance, um, her son, uh, his name is Ozzy, which is kind of cool for me because I'm a huge Ozzy fan. I love that. But uh, he's nothing like Ozzy Osbourne, but he's he's a cool dude anyhow. And um, so we, uh, he was. I was mentioning this to you and Angela just a minute ago. So he had, he had been a big boy when I first met him, and he was eating healthy. And uh, and then he all of a sudden just started losing weight, and me and Eric were noticing. He's like, "Have you noticed he's lost losing weight?" Like, yeah, yeah. And then he just kept doing it. So I was like, "How are you doing it?" And he's eating less, you know, work, going and walking, working out a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, "Well, shit, I should try that eating less thing," you know. <laughs> and so I just put less food in my mouth. As like I stopped eating when I when I, when I went from feeling like I was I needed to eat to where I felt like I okay I put some food in my body. I stopped and waited. And and then I was working on more exercise, trying to walk, and that's it. I mean, I've lost – I was 263 pounds in, at the end of the last year, at the end of 2020, and now I'm 210. That's awesome, so, man. Yeah. Well, it definitely shows. Thanks. And, yeah, like uh, I, I do the same thing. You know, it's, uh, it's good to feel hungry and kind of it, it puts you in this alert state, and uh, you don't always have to just be full and, and – fed all the time you know like uh, eating twice a day is more than enough for a human body and when you're in that condition where you're not full you get more done i think uh, and so i i do i do two maybe three times in a day i'll eat depending on how much physical activity i'm engaged in and it's it's fantastic for me yeah and so yeah i'll usually wait till like almost noon to eat my first meal too really get my yeah I'll wake up and get my workout in and meditate and and do a bunch of stuff and then it's like all right it's it's about time to put some food in your body i'm kind of the same way i don't like to eat food in the morning usually or if i do it i only eat a lot I only eat a lot uh erica is different she'll like come to me like which is so sweet you know you always want somebody who's bringing you food in bed or whatever and i hate saying no sometimes but she's like sometimes she brings me like a cupcake you know you're like okay i can't start with the day with a cupcake <laughs> um but you know nonetheless i mean i'm just i don't wake up and want to eat 
Yeah. And I, the, the big thing is water. I mean, like I, I like to wake up and have water because it gets my body going. It starts generating things and, and it's easy to filter through. So it flushes through whatever sat there overnight and gets my day started, you know, kind of cl- clears it out, you know. And that's all, I've been forever been big on water. And it's just, you know, so that's kind of how I like to start my day. And yeah, food, you know, whatever. Yeah, water is important, man. I try to I try to drink water almost strictly throughout the day and uh but i do a lot of my um my supplements in the morning and do like a a caffeine free pre-workout and amino acids and a protein shake and that's like frank that gets me through most of the day that and a little bowl of oatmeal in between the protein shake and it's like i go till about dinner time and uh i find that i just burn a ton i just started um p90x2 okay and so before you start it, you do a body fat test and, uh, you know, measure your body and see what you're going to accomplish at the end of the I'm 90 day challenge. I'm guessing you're like a 12% body fat right now. I actually, I don't know if I measured it right, but it said 5% body fat. Fuck. Yeah. Ridiculous, Sorry, man. My language. No, you can say fuck on here. It's an explicit podcast. We say whatever mm-hmm. we want, man. I remember our last podcast it was fun. Yeah. And my, our last podcast actually, um, when I watched it back, it, that, that started me down the whole path of, uh, watching my mouth and watching my language. Because uh, that's one of the like, interesting things about doing this is I I watch and I edit them and I, uh, I reflect back on what I'm doing. And uh, and yeah, I was really kind of ashamed at my at my potty mouth. I, if you watch the episode, I think, 13 with uh, that, that we did the first episode with you, uh, I was just I said, fuck, like every sentence, sometimes <laughs> twice in one sentence. Yeah. And it was it just was coming out of my mouth over and over and over. I probably said, fuck, like. 300 times on that podcast well now you said at least four or five so. yeah but these are intentional ones yes. right so this is you're, the, you're describing a story in a, t- a point in time it's not a it's, yeah. not a, it's totally different <laughs> yeah it's not an involuntary thing yeah. that i do where before it was just involuntarily coming out of my mouth almost at like when someone says uh or they're thinking about something it was just fucking fuck 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 you know and I, I i'm just i was really embarrassed by that kind of uh language and it just had gotten out of control over the years i think we're kind of rock and roll too much yeah and thinking it was funny mm, yeah 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 i i know what you're talking about i've known you for a bit and and i, I met you at you were mixing a gig somewhere and and uh and i was there enjoying myself and, and i turned around and you were cool and and like that immediately we hit it off and so we've been friends ever since and and that's one of the things i've noticed about you is that you are you're true to who you are which is cool as shit but uh, you definitely have had the drop of the F, you know, oh, yeah. as part of your regular dialogue um, more than once. And, and I remember when you started working in the corporate meeting <laughs> industry and we're sitting there on a gig and you're like, you still came in. Just when you first came in, you had the long hair and you had the long beard. Yeah. And then the beard, I think, went first and then the hair. Or I don't know which went first. It but, all started going. But the but the, the, the F-bombs were just still there. And I was like, it was man, real bad. I think I told you probably a couple times, like, man, you get a lot further along in this industry. This crowd right here. If you could work on that, and then, uh, but I've always told people, it's like you're definitely a guy that I would work with any day because I mean, you got tons of hustle, you got a great attitude while you're there, and like you, you know your shit. I mean, but that's like that's the given. Like if yeah. you're gonna work with somebody, you want somebody who knows what they're doing, and I'm willing to work with people who don't know what they're doing if they have a good attitude and they've got hustle, or right? they're willing to try. And they all sit there and go, oh, my God, it's hard. I don't want to. Or this isn't really what I want to do with my life. But <laughs> well, why are you here today? Yeah. You know? You don't but get this day back. Exactly. Go do what you want to do with your life, man. Exactly. Which is kind of like bringing in the point of, like, reason why I thought I wanted to come talk with you again today. And, uh, I mean, like, talking about my girlfriend and ta- or fiancé and talking about, you know, weight loss is great. But, you know, like, we have a commonality in, in, in what we've done for our career. And we've both shifted. And you started this path mm-hmm. before COVID. And, you know, doing the, this podcast and we're already on that way and just kind of, I think what you told me was this launched that kind of give you the impetus to take it further, right? Yeah. It gave me the, it gave me the time. Cause on, honestly, like 2019, I never made that much money in my life, but I was also working 30 to 45 days, literally in a row, like without a day off, it was just gig to gig to gig, jumping on planes and going and mixing audio or setting up PAs and stuff. And I was just, I was killing it. And 2020 was lined up the same way. But it was really starting to take its toll on me, like emotionally. Like it's it's great to do this for a job, and I really like doing the audio engineering thing. But when all you do all day is wear a suit and tie and mix corporate sound for people, you know, talking heads, it's really not what I got into the industry for. I love doing it. The but, people you were working with were cool. Like yeah. a lot of the people, crew, like us. I mean, I consider myself cool, but I mean, whatever. The 
uh, the people we were working with were cool, and that's what made the gigs cool. And then getting yeah. on com and chit chatting and stuff like that, talking about things, and uh, that made it cool. But yeah, you're right. I mean, and and, and doesn't have. I mean, in life and jobs, they don't have to be cool. But for us, we pursued a path of cool yeah. for work, and we were like, "What if you could do this for a living?" You know, and uh, so yeah, I totally get it. And then going into mixing those things, where you're like, "Okay, yeah." I went from mixing rock bands and running clubs and, and, you know, doing that kind of thing where it was just is literally a party every night and I get to mix music, which is a big passion of mine, which is me. I've always been a musician to go in and doing the corporate thing. And so I was trying to find a way to um, to get some something more creative back in my life as opposed to just making money with my skills, which I love. I love. It's not even a bad way to make money. It was just the whole compound compounding like uh, aspect of it, where it was like this is all you're doing. I was like literally just in a in a jacket every single day of my life, and just putting talking heads up. And maybe every three or four months, I'd work with a band like once. And I was like, this is really starting to take its toll on me emotionally. And so this podcast was one of the ways that I wanted to. Um, step away from it a little bit and have something creative again in my life. Cause I'd done the band things for a long time. And so, yeah, the COVID thing really kicked it up. It gave me the time to put in to do this mm -hmm. because for, I don't know when I was going to actually make it happen with how much work we were doing. I mean, we were so busy. Yeah. I, I, I so I, I resonate a lot with what exactly what you said. I mean, that's, I, we, we talked about this a lot. That's so we when we had talked at, at the end of our last podcast and said, Hey, we should get back together and talk about the things we've been talking about and if they're actually happening, yeah, the things we want to be doing if they're doing them. And so <clears throat> I've been thinking over the last few months, you know, about the things that I had talked about with you and what I, you know, because that's how goals work. You know, you start out with you start with an idea, you know, something that you want to achieve, but why? And that's the, the, coming to the why. And the, the motivation of it is the most important part for me. And then, because if I can develop that why and know that, like, in my gut, this is the, what I want to do, if I'm solid with it, then I'll figure out a way to make it happen. And that's the way I've always lived my life. And, and it, I credit my dad a lot for giving me that, you know, push and drive to, you know, do and believe in whatever you think. And, um, but, you know, I, it came from a lot of years of working hard through, like, those difficult times. And, I was talking with a buddy of mine, um, so I'm working on a, I'm working on a lot of new projects these days, and uh, you, know, you know, COVID hits, uh, live industry goes away. We all have the same story. You know, had calendar that just went blank. Oh my God, 2020 was going to be such a good year. I oh my God, it. we were going to make so much money. So I started 2020 with uh, getting a surgery to reattach my bicep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I, and, and I was, I was in the midst of my divorce, and thankfully I still had really good health insurance through the through the marriage. But um, so I was able to cover that. But so I had to cancel like two weeks of January. Um, and then I had to cancel another like week of February. Oof. So I missed three weeks in the heart of shit. And then it all drops off middle of March. I think March 11th or whatever was my last day of gigging. Yeah. Right. So I mean, so I had taken three weeks off in that meet. And but I already was I'd already I'd already made a decent amount of money. And I, when I looked at it, I was like, whoa, I sh in that short period of time with taking those three weeks off. This is going to turn out to be probably my best year ever. Yeah. And my goal always wasn't to work more. It's like you talked about. It's like that that struggle of dealing with like there's too much work or, or you're you're making money and you don't want to turn it down or whatever it is. So I that's very real and especially with the you know in the industry we work in, it's it's hard not to be selfish. Yeah. And I remember this is something I talked about last time. It's like so my motivation was always I, I talked about this before. It's like uh, you know COVID hits and I'm thinking. I gotta go work. I gotta go find money because that's always what I've done. I've had jobs consistently since I mean, on the books jobs since I was twelve or thirteen when I first legally could do it, and I had three at the same time and did all sorts of things. And I never stopped working, and I've always like you know pushed. And then I got to this point, so I got this divorce. My son, my mom had just passed away. All these other things. And I was sitting there going, well, why don't I just chill out for a minute and hang out with my kid and see you know. Just take care of that and, and do that thing. Because I looked at my budget and I looked at my money. I was like, all right, I, I got at least a year covered right now. And so why don't I go ahead and just chill out, go through this, and, uh, you know, 
deal with whatever on the back end and just focus on my relationship with my son and myself. And that allowed me this time to think. And like you're talking about, you don't have the time to develop what you want to really do because you're so busy doing everything else. Yeah. So I was like, then I got to, so date, started dating Erica and had a great time lounging around. You know, we were, we were on like permanent vacation for a while and because she was out of work too and I was and we were just, but that was also one of the things that told us like we really were good for each other because we could be together 24-7, not drive each other nuts and really in, inspire each other and like just enjoy it. It's nothing I'd ever experienced before like that. And um, so we're sitting there and, uh, but now I got to work. You know, I got, she doesn't know me from being, you know, the guy pre-COVID. She met me in COVID. Yeah. As far as she knows, I'm some unemployed dude <laughs> who's telling a bunch of bullshit stories. And so I start thinking about, you know, I want to work. And I already had interest in IT. I knew a bit about that industry because of what we do, having to network all the gear and so on. So I started looking at that. And I was like, well, I, I respect the industry and what, you know, what I put into the work I did before. You know, I, I, I want to get back to that six-figure thing. I need to get educated. You know, I know I know some things, but I don't know everything. I need to, so I was looking at getting all these certifications and so on. And I started looking into it and I was like, how am I going to pay for it? And I just had a plan. And then I just got that gut feeling, you know, that why, why the fuck am I going to do this? Sorry for that. And, uh, no. I know, it's but, um, so I have, well, I have an agreement with my son. Every time I cuss, yeah. I have to do 10 push-ups or 10 sit-ups. It's part of the reason why I've lost weight. Oh, you, so, also, you owe us some push-ups, bud. Uh, if you want to roll the camera later, I'll do 10 push-ups <laughs> and 10 sit-ups. Push I think I got two of them in there. <laughs> so, um, I'll do them with you. All right. Well, you got to do like, like 80. I got a lot of push-ups to do. All right. Oh. All right. So anyhow, we're going to, uh, we'll figure that out. But the, um, so yeah, so I'm like. Uh, figuring out what I want to do, and I got into this kind of thing in IT, and I was like, okay, this is this is the thing. And my brother-in-law works big in this. He owns a comp- part owner in his company, and you know, they, he do- he's been doing extremely well for a long time. Computers are never going away. I'm like thinking that, and then I just started thinking, it's like, man, this is a job. Yeah, it sounds like a job, and and it's like you're working for somebody. And I've I've been self-employed most of my adult life. I mean, I've had I had a job for a few years when I you know did some things, but most of everything I've done has been with shows or bands or whatever. And then my big boy noise stuff, it's like all been freelance except for like a few years of my life. And I don't like, I mean, I, I work well with people. I work extremely well with people. I just find that there's a limitation to when I work for somebody yeah. because they're going to, they have an idea of what they need me to do. And then they're, they're not, their vision isn't to help me grow and expand and get better. Their vision is to do this job and to pay me what it's worth for that job. So if or I want bigger and better, can. I have to do something. And so that's where I've always been. And so that didn't fit. So then I was like, all right, dump that idea. What, what am I going to do? And so I have been interested in real estate and money and business since I was a kid. My aunt and uncle, they bought houses and they would rent them out as they would travel. He had a job with the State Department and lived multiple places around the world. And I was, they would buy and rent these houses out and people would pay their mortgages for them. I was like, that's brilliant. It's a great way of saving for your future. So I started doing that. Nice. And when I moved to Vegas and had rental properties, and so I really enjoyed that, and I saw the benefit, and I le- I've always studied the, in- the industry. And so the natural transition for me was to get into real estate. And so I got my license last year, and um, you know, both Eric and I are licensed real estate agents and work with a great firm here in town, brokerage here in town. And, um, but we, you know, that again kind of came into, it's like, even though I'm my own business, I'm still working under somebody, and how do I maintain my individuality? How do I make it about me? Because I work, uh, brokerage's name is Resolution Realty. Fantastic company, the owner of the brokerage. Uh, this guy is awesome. Uh, I, I, I see eye to eye with him on a lot of things. I feel like he's a good person, and he's smart, and uh, so I like working there. And, and the way that the r- rules are set up, you have to work through a brokerage. Because there's, you know, there's so many rules and ethics in real estate. It's ridiculous. It's almost like being a doctor, lawyer, or whatever. Yeah. And um, so how do I maintain that, you know, how do you, remember that dating thing? How do you stand out? How do you, because as a sound engineer for those many years, you know, I'm, I consider myself to be a pretty decent sound engineer. I worked for a long time. So you, obviously if you do something long enough, you're going to get good at it. But I also went out and made sure I educated myself on the latest technology and then I also looked at different things, and that's how I got into the surround sound in a live format and convincing people to let me go record things. 
how do you stand out? How do you, you know, a great friend of mine who's an artist that I worked with on Blue Man and traveled with on a few shows, uh, he built the, sh he designed the shirt. It said, burn the box. And, uh, and I was like, wow, what does that bring? What does it mean, burn the box? He goes, why even think inside or outside the box? Just burn the box all together and start <laughs> from scratch and don't even think about it. You know, it's like, that's a good way of thinking. And um, so with business, so like, so getting into real estate was a, a good transition for me. But I also saw like, I wanted to do all the other things I like doing. I'm not giving up on being an audio engineer. I love it. It's my passion. I started as a musician like you when I was like five, six years old. Started tinkering with shit along the way. Started building guitars when I was in high school and went to college for it and toured with bands and shows and like spent 25 years of my adult life doing that. And so, um, or more actually. And so I wanted to still do that. But now what I'm going after are more creative projects, things that are mine. Um, and in, in regards to real estate, it's like the same thing. I'm trying to tie in how do I make it unique? How do I make it different? And you're buying and selling houses. I mean, but <clears throat> it's such a tough market right now. And it's, uh, there's no inventory. People are outbidding each other. Crazy number, like $50,000 above appraised value. Cash. I mean, it's just... All these people coming in from uh, from California, right? Yeah, there's a there's a fair bit of people migrating here right now from California, New Jersey, and uh, several other markets, and and uh, and they're coming in from higher dollar markets with money, and so Vegas has changed. I mean, when I moved here 20 years ago, it was easy to buy a house. You could hit you could gig and buy a house like easy, and so um, hey, man, it's a uh, it's been challenging. But so what being involved with Erica. Uh, having somebody in my life who I really enjoy being with that much and somebody who does similar things and inspire, we inspire each other, we've decided to come up with a, we're, we created a brand. It's, the brand is by Conway. And it's my last name being Conway. It's everything that I do by Conway. So the real estate division is Homes by Conway. And then we have Big Boy Noise, which is a company that I had for 20 years or whatever. Uh, now that's a, big, that's a by Conway brand. We also have, you know, both of our history with creating events. We have events by Conway. We have vacations by Conway, Vegas by, you know, so all these things that are influences on my life that I enjoy doing, that I have found a way of making money in some ways throughout my life, that I, I would do whether I was getting paid or not. I've created businesses around that. Yeah. And so I'm continuing the entrepreneurial spirit. It's like, that's the thing I love the most, is being able to put myself out there, take all the risk, and like, do things that are challenging and hard because if it's easy, I, I'd rather just, I mean, I'm, I have two modes, busting my balls or sitting on my ass. <laughs> and that's kind of how I work. You know, yeah. it's like right now I got a pro bunch of projects going on around the house. Uh, we wanted to pull, didn't want to spend 50 grand, been unemployed for a while and uh, to put in a, a real pool. So I went out and bought the best above ground pool and dug out the backyard ton. You know, got a huge wheel, uh, dumpster filled with dirt and rock filled it in with some sand and packed it. I mean, I've been out there working every day. Tomorrow, I'm hopefully going to have the thing finished and fill it with water. And nice. So I like, I, I, I like to either bust my ass or sit on my ass. Those are my two modes. So, awesome. yeah. so that's kind of where I've been. So we got a pool party coming up is what you're Most saying. Most definitely. <laughs> it's going to be cool. Yeah. The coolest above ground pool you've ever seen. Awesome. I love that, man. Yeah, my uh, my folks moved to town and they got a, a pool, so it's the hot spot going over to uh, to my folks' house. Me and my buddies, we all end up over there, and my mom will cook for us, and we jump in that pool and hang out. She's got a bunch of floaties; it's fantastic. Yeah, we moved into this place, and it has a uh, it has a pool, but they have it all closed off for COVID. I'm hoping it opens <laughs> up in June. So it's just locked up and and just letting it rot, man, and That's it sucks. Absurd. Yeah, so we'll see. I mean, it's. It's a nice looking pool, a little spa and everything like that, so or a jacuzzi, and so we're we're hoping it cracks open for uh for the summertime because it's gonna be hot. It's gonna be hot. Yeah, yeah. COVID's definitely. Uh, I, I'm not gonna get too far in that. I mean, you don't want to say things that might agree with all people, but uh, nah, you can't agree with all people no matter what these days. Everyone's offended at everything, man. I know. I mean, there's definitely. Uh, anyhow, I don't I don't take things personally, and. Um, so, you know, one of my things, I, I, I care a lot about what people think about me because I want to be, I mean, I'm a good, I've considered myself a good person and I want to treat people with respect and all that stuff. So I care what people think about me, but in the same sense, I, I don't. And that if, if it's, 
if somebody just simply has a difference of opinion to me, I'll respect that you're, you have a difference of opinion. But if you want to yeah. tell me my opinion's wrong, yeah. I'm not going to take it. And I'm just going to go, well, I don't care what you think because I don't care because you're telling me I'm wrong for my opinion about something. So that, and I do the same for other people. And I, and I also champion that for people who are being brought down. It's like, what do you know what it's like to live that person's life? How do you know to think their way? And why do you feel righteous in judging them for that? It's like, yeah. it doesn't seem to make sense to me. So, And everybody shouldn't have the same opinion or ideas about the world anyways. What a boring place that it would, would be, be if boring. we all walked around and just thought the same thing. It's like this... It, there's all all things are possible in this beautiful world of ours, man. And I think it's great that everybody has a difference of opinion. And I think uh, I just my personal opinion is that it shouldn't be uh, putting people down just because they think different than you. And uh, yeah, man. nobody's right. How, how do you know which <laughs> what what people are are the actual ones that are right? You don't. You but know, I'm I'm usually right. Yeah, I'm usually right. But <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, it's a uh, uh, yeah. So. Uh, COVID definitely changed a lot of things. The pools open, the, all those different scenarios um, definitely showed uh, a difference, I think, in our society of people and, and how we handle and react to things. Uh, and it's still resonating today. I mean, like you st it's definitely created some sort of social divide in some ways uh, for some yeah. people. Um, and so, you know, here we are on the other side of it, I think. I've been, I've had, I went ahead and got, uh, gone through the vaccination process. Uh, my reason for doing that has mostly to do with getting back to a normal way of being and knowing that the clients be doing the sound things I do, real estate and so on, I'm dealing with out of state, out, you know, out of the country people on a regular basis. And I like to travel. And there's a lot of limitations that have been set about that are, have nothing to do with me and my choices. So, you know, traveling is one of them, whether you can go certain places. And, uh, and then there's... Even though I'm self-employed, I still work through companies. And sometimes those companies will set, I mean, I had to get a workers' comp insurance policy for my single self that I couldn't actually make a claim on for years because certain clients required it. Yeah. Well, if I want to work for those clients, well, you got to get a COVID vaccination and you got to so on and so forth. Now, my opinions about that and so on has nothing to do with my choices. And uh, so people can't say anything about how I feel one way or the other. Yeah. Because I do have my opinions, but I'm not sharing them. <laughs> but um, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, this is one of the things you learn when you get into real estate. It's like you are a real estate agent. This is the only thing that you're an expert at when you're talking about real estate. Don't talk about anything else. Yeah. Because there's so many liabilities. Yeah. So. Well, you know, it's uh, it's rough that the people are taking away your your choice to actually make that decision for yourself too. You know, a lot of people are afraid of that vaccine, and they're making it not their decision if they want to take it or not, and that kind of sucks, man. I think it's it's something that people should be left up to their own. Uh, discourse for you know but with all things in life yeah if, it if you want to put some fucking weird shit in your body go for it but uh, oh, I owe you some more push ups now <laughs> you're my son yeah I owe your son some push ups mm -hmm. you know if you want to put the vaccine in your body then by all means you should be doing that but I also think the other direction should be allowed to do their thing as well if they're afraid of it or you know like they're, they're forcing them not to they're basically forcing people to take this thing I, had and a I conversation. think that violates a lot of human rights I had a conversation with sorry man I mean yeah I know we're I know, here to talk to you. I, I, I piss my pet peeve when people cut me off. So I like when I cut people off. I'm like, I'm such a dick. <laughs> There's 30 push-ups. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, I had this conversation with an old friend, family friend, and uh, she was talking about how somebody who lived in their neighborhood uh, chose not to get vaccinated because they, this person's a pastor and they run a church, and because there's a, a, there's something to do with a uh, there is a I'm not sure exactly how the vaccine's made, but I believe it's made. There's part of it is made from a, a baby embryo that's been aborted or something like that, and then they, that's part of the delivery process. Not, I'm not an expert at this, so don't quote me on nothing. Don't tell me I'm wrong. I know yeah. I'm wrong. So, but her argument was that he should be getting it because well, everybody should be getting it. And I said, well, his argument is that his religious beliefs and the beliefs of the church that he runs, that they work on, is they're not support, they don't support abortion. And this to them is supporting abortion. So this is their, it has nothing to do with the vaccine, mm -hmm. the virus, or anything else. It's a single thing. It's about their beliefs in abortion. They have the right to have their beliefs. Yeah. And, they, and, and being that he is the leader in, of this group, this Christian you know, church, he should be doing, lead by example. 
You know, it's like, so he should be doing what his group of people all believe in because that's the right thing to do. And um, so I was disagreeing with her on her opinion. Yeah. And she just would not see it. And I was like, okay, well, I respect you for your opinion yeah. and the, the way you feel. And I don't, I don't, it doesn't bother me either way. Yeah. So. And I respect the uh, the preacher for his opinion. Yeah. You know, if you do, it, it's it's his right as a human being on what he puts in his body. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's a touchy subject for some people who just want everybody to do what they say, and you know everybody's not the same person. Why aren't you, you know, like me? Yeah. Everybody has a different opinion about what the hell's going on out there, and they're allowed to. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, on anyhow, to happier, better things. On to happier, better things. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually is coming out nicely. Masks are coming off. Yeah. And uh, I was just, uh, I went and saw my buddy play in this big band, and no one's wearing masks. Everyone's having a good time, yep. and uh, it's just great to be in those social environments again. And, uh, like, the, the, uh, the monastery I go to to meditate and everything like that, that we finally are dropping the mask policy it sucks meditating with a mask dude on, it's all about breathing how are you gonna breathe yeah, through that thing it really makes you it makes you dizzy a little bit man when you're trying to do meditate a little hyperventing of some co2 back on you yeah you know those big deep breaths so it's it's kind of getting back to this normalcy where we're letting that slip into the past and move forward into a brighter future and hopefully uh you know we'll see what happens hopefully enough people have gotten the virus already and or have gotten the vaccine to where we're close enough to herd immunity to where we won't get hit a big spike again and the hospitals won't get overwhelmed. I'm looking forward to the next time you and I get together for these podcasts and we don't talk about COVID at all. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. So. It's, uh, you know, we got the rest of this year to really reflect on what we just went through as a, as a culture, as a society, and uh, be grateful for the future that's coming to us, man. I'm really, I'm really grateful and thankful for everything. And honestly, I'm, I'm grateful for the time I had to self reflect on me and really figure my shit out because, uh, we weren't really, we weren't really privileged with that time where we were able to, you know, really sit and think about what am I doing with my life? It was always, I got work in the morning, I'm going to do 12 hours and then I got to sleep as much as I can. And I got to go back to work and I'm focused and my brain is always focused on money making and what am I going to do next? What's the, what's happening in the future? And uh, just being able to really get to the present moment was such a blessing for me personally. You know, yeah. I really grew a lot. Um, I got a lot healthier during the the pandemic. You know, I I got sober and entirely stopped smoking weed and that stopped blows swearing mind, so dude. much. I'm sorry, and, that's just that, that, I, I, you told me that today. I was like, wow, that's that's a big one. I mean, not like it's not that you know you. <laughs> You're not like a, you never had like in my eyes, like a big issue with smoking weed, but just, I yeah. one of the things that you and I did together and uh, it's become socially more acceptable and legal and all that sort of stuff. And I totally get your, your reasons behind it and uh, um, I respect that. I mean, I think it's awesome. First off, what you just said, like through this last segment, you just said grateful and thankful and all these like positive things. And that's one of the things I've always noticed about you is you find the positive things and you, I didn't know you back in the day. I knew you when I started knowing you and, uh, and you've always been that guy. And so you've always, you know, found the positive and, and, and been grateful for your things. And, uh, and even when you cuss a lot. And uh, so that's cool, man. And, and it's one Bad th habits. It, it's something that, so that term grateful was something that my parents taught me along the way. And, and sometimes people tease me about it. Like, why are you so great? You know, why are you? And I was like, oh, yeah. they just don't get it. And to hear you say it and hear other people inspires me to be more grateful. And to be thankful for the things that I've had going on. And that time is one of those things. My son and I have a great relationship right now. We've still been going through some stuff. It's been difficult, you know. Now, you know, going into having a new stepmom and that scenario. It's been going great, but it's also difficult. Of and, course. And, you know, we just had to put down our dog last week oh, that I'd had for sad. 17 and a half years. I mean, I'd had this dog forever. I loved it. I mean, I'd, I met the dog the second day of his life because I was good friends with the woman who owned his mom. And I, like, I, this was, I, I, had, I had these three dogs, you know, Ozzy, Zeppelin, and O'Malley. So Ozzy, named after Ozzy. Bo white boxer, big circle around his eye like Petey. And uh, I had his ears pinned up only because another dog had bit half of one of the ears off, so I had to have surgery to fix it. So I was like, go ahead and do them both up. But anyhow, coolest dog in the world. Zeppelin, 
after Led Zeppelin. Uh, he was a boxer pit bull mix. And, uh, you know, boxers and pit bulls are just super high energy and great fun. Um, you know, th th these dogs were just fun. And then down the road, we got O'Malley. And like I said, I met O'Malley on day two of his life and took him home at whatever, seven weeks, whatever was healthy time. And, and uh, part Sharpe, part, part Border Collie, and, and uh, had a lot of, like, anxiety issues and whatever, but kept working with him over the years and walking him a lot and doing things. And he was just the most loyal dog. I mean, like, so going through the divorce, I left him behind with another dog we had named Winston who was – a little shit, he pissed all over the house. But, you know, cute as hell, though. <laughs> and um, so I left him behind with my ex-wife because she was in the house, and, and it was fair for them to stay at a place. And I was first living in a room with my buddy Sean Mackey, and, and then I was renting a guest house behind Chris Brown's house and it was by his pool house. And it was like I wasn't really uh, in a spot where I could have dogs. You know, so I left him behind. I'd see him every other week when i go to pick up my kid for about 15 minutes, and it sucked. You know, and then I started seeing him getting older and older. And then... Uh, ex-wife hits me up and says, okay, it's time. And so we all went together, her, myself, and my son. And we took the dog to the vet and all sat with him, cried, did the whole thing. And uh, it was because of all, like a lot of the things that both her and I had done. But like I had a lot of uh, encouragement from Eric and my fiance, but um, we handled it very well. And I think that that time that we had of being unemployed for both her and I, my ex-wife and I, with our son, allowed us to do that better. And um, to that time I'm grateful for. So that's... Yeah. yeah, losing a dog's a big one, man. But there's just, such a, there's just such a special entity in your life, man. I really feel like dogs help us live a little better and uh, appreciate our time here a little more. It's their, uh, their finality of... Uh, their lifespan really it really kicks you in the butt man when when a dog passes and you realize your own mortality and your own time here is finite and uh and yeah they're just a they're just a blessing to us man to really wake us up to how short everything really is and how much we really need to enjoy this yeah. for the present moment yeah i love taking my dog out uh for a walk she just is fascinated with the world so much and sniffing every little thing, and yeah. and just it. Just, she was sniffing me earlier. <laughs> yeah. I sat down the chair. Yeah, yeah. yeah she, they just they're just so full of life and love, and and they're they're here for a, a brief moment, and then uh, they're gone. And it's really a, a huge lesson on how to yeah. how to exist in this world. I think that we get from dogs. True to that. Uh, I wasn't. Uh, I mean, I was definitely sad by losing the dog, but my point to that was more about the time and how it was able. You know, I don't know that. You know, Max and I, we didn't work out so well, and so, but we still work on getting along, and uh, I've been, it's been something I've been trying to focus on is having a better relationship with her so that I have a better relationship with her and my son together. And, um, and so in that moment, I felt really good because the work had been done, and we were able to sit next to each other and, like, help our son through that because it was his dog since he was born, and he's now nine and a half or almost ten, and so for him it was a really big deal. So oh, yeah. I thought the time that we had helped us be able to do that. So Yeah, it's a it's a big wake up call when one of those things uh when those kind of things happen, man. Uh I remember uh when the dog I had as a child finally passed. I'd been moved out for a long time. That thing lived like eighteen years or something. It's this nuts. little tiny terrier, man. But we were just I was I was happy for it. I the last time I'd seen him he was blind and deaf but he could still smell who i was and, and knew who you were and got excited right oh yeah he yeah. freaked out man yeah, and cool. uh and he just lived a great life he was sleeping in my parents bed and he would eat real food you couldn't get him to eat dog food we'd spoil the crap out of that dog and yeah and he was just a happy puppy and uh it was sad to see him go but we knew he had a great existence on this planet and uh you know we were glad to be able to provide that for him right on, and man. so yeah now anytime i every time i got my dog in my lap i know that you know, maybe she's got five more years or something like that, and I want to make those five years fantastic for her. And by me making those years fantastic for her, I make them fantastic for me. And so uh, they really help you live your life just so much better, and I'm just super grateful for her. She's my favorite thing, man. Like, she'll make me put down my uh, my video game or my phone or something like that. It's funny like that. Just pat her belly or mm -hmm. give her some love, you know? And it's just like this brings me, when you're... I mean, you're more aware of what's going on internally with your mind and with your, your chemistry and your body and what's bringing you 
happiness. It's like the dog brings me infinitely more happiness than any video game ever does. They make you slow down and check things out. You know, they, yeah. they, I think they know when to do it too. You know. Yeah. Some dogs are a little more annoying than others, but uh, <laughs> so we have two two dogs at our house. I'm not. I'm sorry, that was a bad transition. No. We have, are, the dogs at our house are fantastic, uh, um, but uh, it's, they're my uh, future stepson uh, Erica's son's dogs, and they're big and they're. Uh, they just love to be on your laps, you know, and they're like 70, 80 pound dogs, you know, and, um, and the little one, and it's not little, uh, she's, her name's Kyrie. She's got, her name comes from anime, something I'm not sure exactly, but he knows, he named her. And then, uh, she, she has this little wet nose always, and she'll always just take her nose and push it on you like, Hey, pet me, Hey, pet me. And you're like, I'm in the middle <laughs> of doing something right now. Um, but yeah, she, she's cute as hell. And I love both those dogs and they always, they know when to roll over cause they know I'm going to pet them. You know, I can't help it. I've had dogs when I was a kid. So yeah. but I actually got to take off in a few seconds cause I got to go good. take care of everything. But I wanted to share, uh, so the, the thing about, you know, going into the business and doing all these things that I, uh, really wanted to achieve was be able to do something that was fun and um, didn't feel like work like I've done with throughout my career and but also having the ability to do it with somebody on a lot of ways like was something really cool and um, so the um, I, so but real estate like I said is very challenging had to get creative and I've been able to recently meet with some people and, and working on a project that I hope to be able to talk about next time I'm here. Awesome. I got a couple things in the works, but uh, this one involves some cool stuff tying in real estate and some business ventures otherwise and some cool sound things and creative things. Uh, I've, I'm sorry to be vague, but, you know. Uh, That's how it goes when it's yeah, in the future. Yeah, well, I, I don't know when things are going to happen, when you're going to release this video and all that sort of stuff. So, but, um, or podcast, I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah. It's it's interesting stuff, and I'll talk to you about it offline awesome. sometime. But uh, yeah, that's what I that's so all of this comes into I guess all these things that I've been going through over the last year since we've last talked have helped inspire me to get to this point to where I think that things are going to take off and and really cool. So well, we'll nice. See. Well, it's been great having you on the podcast. I really appreciate your time, and uh, we'll get the heck out of here. Um, yeah. So this has been to the fullest. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, click the bell, all that stuff. Share this with your friends. Uh, you know, we need subscribers. We need people on this thing uh, clicking the links and whatnot. So, uh, yeah. Once again, I'd love to thank my guest, Josh Conway. You've been amazing. Thank you, Jason. Yeah. Go out and support this guy. He's awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, this has been To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Take it easy. Peace. Recording. We got some push-ups to do. Oh, God. Here we go. We go. One, two... Four, five, six, Thanks for watching To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We air new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.